In the previous video, we were in the middle of implementing the binary space partitioning algorithm. What I want to do now is implement the split vertically and split horizontally methods. Now, I have just realized that I have added too many parameters here. For the vertical split, what we want is minimum width, so we can delete the height. And for the horizontal split, we only want to have minimum width. So let's delete it, uh, passing to the vertical split the height, and to horizontal split the width, and above let's do the same. Okay, the horizontal split let's uh, delete the width, and vertical split let's delete the height. Great. So in this video, I would like to implement those. Okay, so let me explain how this will work. At the start of our algorithm, we will have a bounding box. So this is the violet bounding box, and the box is of type bounds int, which means that it has some parameters, like the point at the bottom left corner is room.min, the width is accessed through room.size.x, which is width, and room.size.y is the height of our room. Now, if we perform the split, for example, the vertical split, we need to calculate the position of the split, or rather, the width of one of the rooms. Since our rooms are expressed in integer values, we can split the room from zero to the room.size.width. But we do not want to cut the room at the borders of it, so we are going to start from one and end just before the border of the room, and between those two points we are going to select randomly a value, and we are going to perform a split in the vertical direction. So after we perform the split, we will have now two rooms, room 1 and room 2. Room 1 is defined by the bottom left corner, so the room.min value, and room 2 will be defined by room.min.x value plus the x split, so the x split value is simply the width of our first room, and room 2 will simply start at room.min.x plus x split, and the remaining parameters will be the same as for the room.min. Now, if we start defining those rooms, we will need to have for the room 1 the start point, so the minimum point of the room, and the size of it. And the size, as I have mentioned, will be the width will be x split, the y will be the, simply the size of the height of the basic room, and the room. Dot, uh, the z value will be room.size.z because we need to express the size in a vector form. Now, to define the second room, we will need to take the first point, so the minimum point that we have calculated beforehand, and now we will also have to define the size. And to define the size, it will be simply the uh, whole width of the big room minus the x split. So the width of the first room, so we are going to type room.size.x minus x split, the height will be room.size.y, and uh, on the z value we can copy room.size.z, although it will always be zero in our case. Now for the horizontal split you would do the same operation, simply uh, create a room, then split it into two rooms, and calculate the point here, and the size, so the width and height of the second room, and the width and the height of the first room, and it would be good to go. So this is what we are going to implement right now. Okay, we are back in Visual Studio. So let's implement the vertical split. So here, instead of throwing an exception, we are going to create var x split, and we are going to simply calculate a random dot range. If you do not have it, alt enter. If it doesn't show, make sure that you set using random equals unity engine dot random at the top. So we are using always unity engine dot random library. So we are going to get a random between one and the room, which is our bounding bounds int, so the big area dot size dot x. 
and we do this this way because our range doesn't include the max value so basically it works like we would take room.size.x minus one but since it already doesn't include it we do not have to add minus one and it will return us an int value so now when we have our split all we need to do is we need to define our bounds int room one and room two so room one will be a new bounds int and in the constructors we will see that we can specify the position which is the minimum position and the size I would like to show you the constructor in the documentation for the bounds int but unfortunately this is not described but since I have tested that the position is indeed the minimum point of the bounding box we will use the basic constructor let's go back to code great so all we want to do is to set first the start position and next the size of our bounding box so for the room one as you might recall this was room.min as the start position and the size was a new vector 3 int since we need to set it as the vector 3 int and it will be x split as the width and for the remaining parameters we are going to use room.min.y and room.min.z and this will be the room number one okay and next we need to define bounds room 2 equals new and we are going to define a new bounds int and again new vector 3 int because now we need to create our second minimum point or the minimum point for the room 2 so this will be the room dot min dot x value so the uh, x value of the minimum point of the big bounding box plus the x split which will give us our new point the remaining parameters uh, will be the same as the room.min.y and room.min.z and this is only the starting point i can see some issue with the first room i have forgotten the ending parenthesis so after we create room to start position we can create a size so new vector 3 int and the size of it will be the room dot size dot x so this is the size of the whole area that we want to split minus the x split value the room uh, the width or the height rather will be the room dot size dot y and the z value will be room dot size dot z and this will be it we have now defined our two new rooms we need to enqueue those rooms to our queue of bounds in so room q dot nq our room one and we are going to nq rooms uh, q dot nq our room two and this is how we have split our room vertically now basically we need to do the same for the horizontal split so we can actually let's not copy let's write it from scratch so in the split horizontally we are going to uh, create var y split equals new uh, sorry random dot range and we are going to start from one and try the random between one and room dot size dot y which is the height of the room if we have this again we need to define bounds int room one equals new bounds and we are going to call room dot min again and we are going to create new vector 3 int for the size and the size will be room dot size dot x for the x parameter for the second will be it will be y split and for the third it will be room dot size dot z great now let's create bounds int for the room 2 and this will be new bounds int and we are going to create a new point for the start so the bottom left corner of the room 2 which will be new vector 3 int and again we are going to uh, set the room dot min dot x as the x value we are going to set room dot min dot y plus the 
y split as the y value and for the z value it will be room dot min dot z and we need to define a new vector for the size so new vector 3 int and in here we are going to define room dot size dot x as the width of the new room room dot size dot y minus the y split for the height of the room and the room dot size dot z for the z value and again what we can do is copy the room q and q for both of those rooms so in this case we have split the room in a horizontal manner so we have generated a y value and using this y value we have split the big room into smaller uh, two smaller rooms now we can tweak this parameter for both of them. For example, we can ensure that we have always split the room equally, or rather in a way that we can place two rooms in both room one and room two. And to do this, we would always create a random value between room uh, dot, uh, uh, sorry, the min height. And we would end up in a room dot size dot y minus mean height so this would ensure that we always create a split in a way that we can fit two rooms together but this will create a grid light structure rather than a random uh, randomly placed rooms so this will look a bit less organic that's why we are randomly choosing the y and x split values just wanted to show you that this is this algorithm can be tweaked quite a bit and to achieve a bit different results so in the end we are going to repeat those steps in the binary space partitioning algorithm until we end up with rooms that can either not be split or are too small to add to our rooms list and again we are using the random node value less than 0.5f to prefer to prefer a split but as i have previously mentioned i want to always perform a split so that we can end up with a result much quicker and we are not left with big rooms that are not split great in the next video we are going to create a generator that creates rooms first so this will be using the binary space partitioning algorithm that we have created in this and the previous video so see you in the next video and just to mention in the split vertically and horizontally we are adding to our room queue so the count will always be greater than zero unless we do not run those splits so unless the room cannot be split or the minimum height and minimum width is, so the size of the room doesn't meet the expected uh, condition for the rooms to be split great in the next video we are going to create a generator that generates rooms first which will use our binary space partitioning algorithm. See you in the next video.